I feel like you'll often get the advice, even on this channel, that cars is something that you get better at if you just do more passages. And that is entirely true, but that's also probably really discouraging to hear as a student. You're like, I've already done all these cars, you know, the entire AMC cars, Q packs, whatever, and I'm still scoring like 40% on every passage. So if that's you, what you probably need is better strategies. So whether you are just starting out your MCAT studying and you're trying to get better at this very difficult section, or you're someone that's taken a couple MCATs and just cannot get your car score above like a 123 or 124, this is a strategy that you should be doing. This is the foundation that you need to know so that you can eventually make a good main idea as we call it on this channel. If you're new here, my name is Maggie. I'm a third year medical student and a former professional MCAT tutor. I scored in the 100th percentile on my own MCAT and fun fact, cars was the only section that I missed questions on, but I still did well on the section, obviously. I started out with a really low car score and it took so much dedicated practice. And so I like to think that this is one of the sections I actually am the best at tutoring because I have been there. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you the four corner method or the four course competencies as we call it on this channel to help you get better at reading cars passages and getting a good main idea. So I am gonna take you through a car's passage and show you what this looks like with a real passage. But first I want to briefly touch on what the four corners is. We've already made a video up on our strategies playlist going through all the different four corners, but basically it looks something like this. And what the four corners is, is the four components of a solid main idea. And those are main idea. And really what this is, is an immature main idea or more like a summary of the passage. And then we have arguments and then we have arguments, pretty self-explanatory that's going to be those big pillars that are kind of holding up the main idea, the kind of evidence, as the MCAT calls it, that supports the main idea or different things that are brought up within the passage. Then we have tone. Tone is the way that the author feels about the passage. And as you know, these cars passages are not sciencey at all, right? Like they're like almost opinion pieces on different philosophy or literature or history or politics, things like that. So almost always the author is going to come across in the passage with some sort of tone, some sort of like opinion or bias almost. And that's something that you do need to pick up on because the MCAT does ask questions about the tone. And we'll kind of go through some examples of how tone could come across using specific words within the passages. The last one is intentions or author's intentions. And that's kind of like, what is the author doing with this passage? Are they just informing the audience? Are they trying to convince the audience one way or another? Are they challenging the status quo? Things like that. In the end, this is just, this is just the beginning of kind of your car's journey and what you should be getting out of a passage. And the very end, when you take your MCAT, you're not going to be writing down all these four corners. You're going to be writing down one main idea, a mature main idea that incorporates all of these four corners into it. But I think it's a really good thing for beginners or people who just aren't very good at cars to be able to pick out all of these things. Because if you can't pick them out individually, then there's no way that you're gonna be able to incorporate them all together in the end. So definitely go back and watch the video on our strategies playlist if you want a little bit more explanation of what these four corners look like. But I wanna go ahead and get into the passage. I'm gonna try not to take forever on this passage, but I'll go through kind of what I do. The first thing is I scroll down and I read the title. So it's called The Vertical City. And I don't know what that means at all. So let's just start reading. In the vast tapestry, of human history, few urban phenomena have captured the imagination quite like the Kowloon walled city. I'm already getting tone here, right? Words like captured, captured the imagination, that feels pretty strong because I could have just said few urban phenomena have been as creative and that would have been more like an informative type tone but this is this is tone right here that's the words you should be looking out for those adjectives nestled within the bustling metropolis of hong kong this extraordinary enclave stood as a testament to the paradoxical nature of human oh sorry of urban existence a relic of history kowloon walled city's labyrinth streets and towering structures challenge conventional notions of city planning and governance which forces us to question the boundaries of society law and human adaptability so we already have quite a lot to work with here, right? We're getting tone. We're starting to see maybe what the main idea is going to be like. Probably going to be about this Kowloon walled city. I think this last sentence is pretty telling, saying that they challenged conventional notions of city planning and governance. We're questioning the boundaries of society. Like, wow, those are big words. I'm getting more tone here, right? Just more support. Initially, the Kowloon walled city was a military fort constructed by the Chinese imperial government in the late Song Dynasty. It gives a time period 
Positioned strategically along the salt trade route, the fort played a vital role in protecting against pirates and bandits. However, as the dynasties changed and the British Empire expanded its influence in the region, Kowloon Walled City underwent a series of transition that would ultimately shape its destiny. So this is more of an informative type of paragraph, right? We're just getting a little bit of history. In the 19th century, the British acquired Hong Kong Island, leaving Kowloon Walled City as a territorial anomaly, disconnected from both Chinese and British rule. As a result, the fort's jurisdiction became blurred, giving rise to its legal to a legal vacuum that would persist for decades. I'm probably getting a little bit too sort of advanced here for the Four Corners method or for beginners, but like these are, this is a new kind of idea. This is a new kind of argument. So we're, we're given kind of a taste of the main idea about this Kowloon Walled City. We're given a little bit of the history and now we're talking about a legal vacuum or we're talking about like this Chinese versus British rule. These are arguments. The vacuum attracted a motley crew of inhabitants from refugees and squatters to those seeking to escape the reach of the law. This influx of people marked the beginning of the city's transformation into the densely populated urban maze we think of today. So this is maybe and this is a new argument. I don't know if it's going to be like a main argument that I'm going to put in my four corners but this is definitely a new argument that like there was this sort of questioning of the boundaries of law that was mentioned in the first paragraph we're getting a little bit more evidence for it right here right so that's turning it from just a detail into an argument the most remarkable aspect of Kowloon Walled City was undoubtedly its architecture new argument here new idea unlike traditional cities that expand outward Kowloon Walled City defied con conventional urban planning growing vertically over the years an intricate network of interconnected high-rise buildings emerged creating a vertical cityscape that was unlike anything seen before unlike anything seen before more tone right this author is awestruck who was this author? Wow, they're awestruck. Building upon existing structures, residents constructed their homes, shops, and businesses upward, forming a dense web of passageways, staircases, and cramped living spaces. The result was a three-dimensional puzzle where daylight barely penetrated and residents navigated the maze light street by memory rather than sight. Inside Kowloon Walled City, life was an exercise in adaptation and resilience. With limited access to basic amenities like clean water and sanitation, residents devised ingenious ways to meet their daily needs. Rooftops were transformed into communal gardens and a complex systems of pipes and wires crisscrossed the city to provide essential services. Despite its chaotic appearance, the city operated with an astonishing degree of self-sufficiency. Are we seeing these words? Are we seeing the same words here? Astonishing tone. Small businesses thrived, offering a diverse range of services from traditional Chinese medicine to illicit activities that flourished in the shadow of the law. The community developed its own social order, relying on informal networks and shared norms to maintain a semblance of order. For decades, the question of who held authority over Kowloon Walled City remained a contentious issue. The British and Chinese governments each sought to assert their jurisdiction, but the city's resilient and inhabitants resisted both. So here we're going a little bit back to this whole like there's two governments that want it but it seems like neither one of them are really able to keep control of this Kowloon walled city. It's more like anarchist seems like. It was not until 1993 that an agreement was reached and the city was finally demolished. In its place a park now stands as a testament to the unique history of this urban anomaly. The story of Kowloon walled city challenges our understanding of urban life and governance. It was a place where residents forged their own path in the absence of formal rules and regulations demonstrating the remarkable adaptability of the human spirit. So I think that it mentioned adaptability earlier, right? Yeah, human adaptability. Luckily, we were given kind of a thesis statement at the end of this first paragraph, right? So we kind of have a framework just from that first paragraph. But this is a new idea, right? Human adaptability. So we have the whole like Chinese versus British government thing. That's an argument. We have the like sort of lawlessness of this city that's another argument we have the architecture that was its own argument and now we're having this human adaptability that seems like it's going to um be its own argument as well. Yet, it was also a place where a lack of oversight led to squalor and hardship for many. The city serves as a case study for urban planners, sociologists, and historians alike. It reminds us that even in the most extraordinary circumstances, communities will emerge, structures will be bit, built, and life will persist. It also serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the importance of responsible urban planning and governance in our rapidly urbanizing world. In the end, Kowloon Walled City was a paradox, a place where chaos and order, lawlessness and community, coexisted in a way that challenges our understanding of what it means to live in a city. 
It is a place that will forever be etched in the annals of history, a testament to the boundless adaptability of the human spirit in the face of the most challenging of circumstances. If ever there was a passage that had tone, this is the one. So what are we looking for here? The main idea, when, when we're making a main idea, like when you sit for your MCAT, I don't want you to do this, but when you're doing the four corners, I want this to be basically a summary. It needs to be like one sentence. Like I don't want this to be a whole thing. Arguments here, we kind of went through some of the three or four largest arguments, those ones that got a lot of space that was dedicated to expanding on them with evidence, right? Which is basically just more words. We talked a lot about tone and how the author was getting that across with the verbiage that they were using and the sort of adjectives that they were using to describe certain things. And then author's intentions, that's one that I like to save until the end because I think a lot of times like the author's intentions can come through right at the very end. It can kind of change your mind. You could be like, oh, they're actually like, they come at the very end in this one paragraph at the end that's like, so we shouldn't do this. So I pretty, I didn't touch on intentions while we were going through, but I'm obviously going to talk about it now. And I wanna scroll down and show you kind of what I got for all of these four corners. This main idea, I will say, I guess because I'm used to doing like just a single main idea instead of the four corners method, this is probably a little bit advanced and less of a summary, but this says Kowloon Walled City, a densely populated enclave in Hong Kong with a vertical, informal, and lawless urban structure, defied conventions and serves as a unique case study of human adaptability. So this is sort of the goal, right? Do you see how I brought in using a single word here, vertical? That is the way that I'm bringing in that argument about its architecture. Lawless urban structure, that's three words that will ping in my brain that we talked for like a whole paragraph or two about the lawless nature of the Kowloon Walled City. Unique case study, that's language that I pulled directly from the passage because I thought it was a good representation of what we were talking about. I like that sentence where it was like sociologists, historians, all these different people. This is a case study for them because it's so unique. And then brought in human adaptability just with those two words, just right there, human adaptability. So here I'm getting my largest arguments into my main idea. I'm getting the whole idea, which is just how interesting and unique this Kowloon Walled City is. I'm honestly getting some tone in here as well, but I think I'm getting ahead of myself. Sorry, let's go on to the arguments. Residents constructed a maze-like vertical cityscape challenging traditional urban planning concepts. So right, there were like two whole paragraphs there that were talking about the way that the city was built. It kind of kept coming up in the passage, but also there was like, it, I know at least a whole paragraph that was just talking about that. That's an argument. Inhabitants in adapted ingeniously to their environment, creating self-sustaining communities and challenging conditions. So do you see how I'm kind of like, I kind of did too much with this main idea because I'm putting this argument into my main idea. And I don't want you to conflate the two. Arguments are not main ideas, but arguments support the main idea. The main idea, I like how John said it the other day to me, he said it's the spirit of the passage. It's like, what are you trying to really get across? And obviously that's going to be supported by arguments, but it is not argument. The last argument I have is the British and Chinese governments faced a long-standing jurisdictional dispute over the city's government. And honestly, if I if I was going to put one more argument in here, I would put something about the lawlessness of the citizens. Because I think that that was an argument that had sufficient evidence for me to put it as an argument in my four corners. The tone, awestruck. That's like the main thing that I was getting throughout. Like the author clearly was like, how could this be? Like this city is completely different than everything else that has been in human history. And they were getting it across with those adjectives, with those verbiages. And then the author's intention. I think was to explain a long gone urban anomaly and to make the reader question the status quo of urbanicity and legislation. There was a pretty telling sentence here, I think it was in the last paragraph, that said, oh, it serves as a case study, blah, 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 it reminds us that in the most extraordinary circumstances, they'll blah, 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 but it also serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the importance of responsible urban planning. That's an author's intention sentence. So you see how these things come across in different sentences, and so you have to be able to pick Pick it up when you see it. So that's why the four corners method I think is so helpful because you are forced to find a place where the author says this, where the author kind of explains their intentions through the words that they're choosing, it explains their tone or how they feel about the passage through the words that they're picking. And I know that that's like probably nitpicking. We probably all hate that. I know I hated it when I was going through my MCAT studying. 
but that's just the way it is and that's how we are going to get better. So every passage that you read, I want you to be able to pick these things out in all of them. Eventually you can move on to like the second stage of what we say is the condensing to the main idea pathway. I'm not explaining this well, but this is like step one of getting good at cars. Step two is something we call the house method. And I actually really like that method because it helps you distinguish main idea from arguments really well. You can watch all of these strategies on our strategies playlist. And then eventually the last one will be just writing a solid main idea that incorporates all of this stuff in it. Now you may have noticed I am the author of this passage. So if you're wondering what that's about, me and John have been, I mean, our high yield sciences is like our thing, but we've been really interested in trying to make some sort of product for cars. And so that this is part of a larger thing that we're working on. And I'm really excited that maybe we'll have a cars product out soon that can help you guys to improve on this section of the exam. Cause I truly think this is the one that gives most students trouble. In my tutoring experiences, this is the one that gives most students the trouble. So keep an eye out for that. If you like this video, hit like and subscribe. Check out everything that we're, we got going on in the description below and send this to a friend who sucks at cars. <laughs> I was that friend. Okay guys, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.